Hello and welcome to Pizza 360. I'm Daniel Lee Perea. Our guest today, joining us via Skype, is Peter Reinhardt. Peter is a chef on assignment at Johnson & Wales University in Charlotte, North Carolina. He has consulted with over 25 major companies on dough development for pizza, breads, and new products. His book, American Pie, My Search for the Perfect Pizza, published in 2003, predicted the artisan pizza movement. In 2011, he launched the popular website PizzaQuest.com that continues to chronicle the ever-expanding pizza universe. Peter, how are you today? I'm great. It's good talking with you. Now, you often say that pizza is 90% about the dough and 10% about the toppings. Why is the dough the most important? Boy, I'm really glad you picked up on that quote because, you know, that's sort of my one of my signature lines. And I, it's important to me because I my philosophy on pizza is, is that there's only two kinds of pizza. There's good pizza and there's great pizza. So it's good and very good. And But what differentiates between good and very good is that very good pizza, for me, the definition of it is that it's memorable. And what makes a pizza memorable, again, to me and to a lot of other people, I believe, is it's the crust. The crust is much more a part of the memorable quality of a pizza than the toppings, even though we love our toppings. And I'm not opposed to toppings. I love them. And But the thing is, is if you've got uh, uh, great toppings, the world's best toppings, but it's on just an average crust, the best you could say about that pizza is, is that it's pretty good, it's interesting, but you don't go, it's not a wow pizza. But when you're thinking about the pizzas in your life that were the wow pizzas, there's almost always, you know, a part of that memory of it is there was something about that crust. It was either the crunch or the creaminess of it or the way it just felt, the, the char, who knows what it was. But something about the crust is what made it memorable. And that, that those are the ones I put in the very good category. Then you can look at dough as an opportunity to increase earning potential? Well, I mean, there's a limited list of things that you can do in a pizza shop. Uh, certainly, um, uh, many of the pizzerias already are using their dough, for instance, to make uh, garlic knots. That's a classic. That A few years ago, that was a kind of a new idea. And now everyone does it. A few years ago, People weren't thinking about breadsticks so much from their dough, but now a lot of people do that. But if you're not already doing rolls of any sort, whether you call them garlic knots and brush them with garlic butter or just a nice roll or even a sandwich loaf from that dough, because if you have a good pizza dough, then you've certainly got the basis for any other kind of bread that you can make from it. You can make uh, focaccia, you can make uh, ciabatta, you can make uh, schiacciata, which is kind of like Tuscan pizza. You could, from that same dough, if you're making a pan, a regular uh, standard you know, Neapolitan style pizza, you could also turn it into a pan or Sicilian style pizza. Uh, so that one dough could be turned into many different products. Well, let's talk about that diversification. What other products can pizza operators be making with their dough that they may not necessarily have thought about? Um, a lot of places, like I say, already do it, but the, the uh, areas of opportunity, we'll say, would include uh, calzones and strombolis rolled up or folded over. Uh, again, it's been done. You know, 30 years ago, it was the new thing. Now, everybody probably is already doing it. But I'm fascinated with, with one new direction that's coming down the pipe. And uh, we're seeing it expand because it tastes so good. And that is fried pizza dough, which, uh, uh, again, can be used in a number of different ways. Uh, in, um, in Rome, there's something, I believe it's called uh, pizzarella or pizzarello that is a, a fried pizza dough cut into strips and sprinkled with sugar and used almost like a dessert. Now, since everybody is competing with the $5 pizza, and if your dough is higher quality, how do you communicate that to the consumer? I don't think that the, the cost of the dough is not going to be the issue. Uh, I think all operators will realize that, that we're not talking about adding any expensive ingredients. So the, the what's what's making the difference might be the degree of handcraftedness that goes into that. So, you know, we'll, we see a, a pizzerias that focus on that. They're, this new breed of pizzerias, uh, you know, I wrote a book 10 years ago. Uh, the subtitle was My Search for the Perfect Pizza. Uh, there have been so many pizzerias that have opened since that book came out that I would have to write a whole new book. In fact, I have a website now that that just sort of chronicles that at pizzaquest.com to um to keep up with all the great new pizzas that fall in the category that we call artisan pizza. So that that's sort of a, a generic name. That's a word that's getting maybe overused and, or misused a lot of places. But what it's supposed to stand for is a crafted or handcrafted pizza. Well, most pizzas are handcrafted. 
they're not all, very few places are running them through a machine. They're usually stretched. They can be tossed. Um, but there's something again that we associate with the notion of craft that uh, falls in that category more of the memorable pizzas as opposed to the good everyday pizzas. Uh, when we think craftedness, we think craft is means it's on another level. Uh, pizza making is a noble craft, and it's not just a business. And if we can connect our customers to that notion, to the idea that what they're eating is a crafted product, and and it doesn't take much to spin that pizza in a way that makes it feel more crafted uh, by the 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 quality of the dough, perhaps the the way that we present it, the um, maybe the uh, type of heat that we're using, again, the right oven for the right style of pizzas. Um, that is meaningful. That has value. It has market value. All right, I've got one more question for you. What's the one best piece of advice you could give our viewers? Best piece of advice? Um, well, that's a, that's a kind of a loaded question, I would say. As a dough guy, I'm going to go back to dough as my thing. I think that, uh, you know, it's very important to start with the dough and look at that and see, is there anything more I can do to improve the quality of my dough? Um, and get some customer feedback on that and maybe go around and taste pizza, other pizzas that are getting some notice for being great and see what you can learn from them. So maybe the single best piece of advice I can give anybody is to explore the territory and make a list of, because we're seeing top 10 lists all the time on the, on the web. Um, and, and it's interesting that you can see five different top 10 lists and have 10 totally different pizzerias on each list because there are so many great pizzerias popping up. So go to the ones that are doing great work, um, find out what you like about it and see how much of that you can apply to what you're doing and then find a way to transmit that to your customers, to get that message to your customers that you care so much that you're taking it to another level. Well, Peter, thank you so much for being on the show. And that's about all the time we have for this month. Keep an eye out for Peter's 10th book, the Bread Revolution, coming out in October from 10 Speed Press. Thank you for watching. Visit PMQ on social media or at PMQ.com. For Pizza 360, I'm Daniel Lee Perea.